forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God. 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left done. We have not loved you with a whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthening you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have Our mercy on us. Holy God, holy, holy and mighty, mighty holy, holy and mortal one. one. Have, have mercy upon, upon us. Holy, holy God, God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sin. Grant your people grace to love what you command, desire what you promise that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm today is Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. So Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls from the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life shall lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. Where I am, there will my servant be. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. Though it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it. I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it. They said it was thunder, and others said an angel had spoken to him. And Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Seated. I know that all of you know that the word for love in the New Testament is agape, right? Y'all all know that. No, 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 not philos, not eros, agape. Because God's love is somehow different. It's love, but it's somehow a little different from that which we normally use the word to be. What you may not be aware of is that in the Old Testament, there's also a special word that is used for God's love. It's not a common, not the common Hebrew word for love. That's chesed. Let's all say that together, all right? Chesed. chesed. That was chesed. weak. Chesed. 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 Now, chesed, to understand agape, I think we need to understand chesed because the people who wrote the New Testament were Jews who were born in and raised in the Old Testament. It said, Philos doesn't fit. Let's use agape because that fits Hesed better. But if we don't know what Hesed is, we know what agape is. So let's look at Hesed a minute. But Hesed, to understand Hesed, we have to look a little further. And that is at the concept of covenant because Hesed is defined above all else by the term covenant. So we're going to take just a few minutes look at that work, that term, and hopefully inform our understanding of, of agape. Okay, y'all with me? Uh, there's a couple of nods anyway. Uh, now, during this year in Lent, for the Old Testament, we had read the stories of all of the covenants in the Old Testament. So I'm going, this is a test to see how many remember those covenants. So I'm looking for hands. And remember, we've, we've just read them at the Old Testament lesson every week, on week, on week, on week, on week. Anybody know any of them? Oh, come on. Y'all are bashful. Noah. Noah. Noah's one. All right. That's a good one. Noah. Who? The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are related to a covenant. Yes. Okay. That has to do with Moses and coming out of Egypt. I'm looking for one more. One, Abraham. I heard an Abraham over here. Did I hear an Abraham? I heard an Abraham. Good. Uh, so Noah 
the rainbow is the sign of the of the covenant between God and Noah and the people who were descended from Noah, which is a promise by God that the divine power will not be used to destroy the earth. That's where our faith begins, that this is a good earth and it's not going to be damaged by God. A kind of surprising to the philosophers who think God has no limits because God limits God's self. Well, that didn't work out so well. People continued to have wars and fight, anger and frustrations and guilt and all the things that we experience. So God says, we need another covenant. We need to work again. So he calls Abraham. He tells Abraham, if you will take your family and move to this strange land that you've never heard of and never been to, I will promise you that you will have heirs, that you will have children, a child. From that child will come so many children, you cannot number them. And they, they will be used by, by me to change the world. Now, there's a wonderful story we didn't read about Abraham. It's a very strange story, but I thought I'd read it because it's fun. <laughs> and it points to how important covenant is. This is from the 15th chapter of Genesis. It's a story of a, of a mystical experience which the man Abram had. So God brought Abraham outside and said, look toward the heavens and count the stars if you're able to count them. And then God said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord. And the Lord reckoned it to him as righteous. And then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur to, of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But Abraham said, O oh Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? And God said to him, bring me a heifer three years old a female goat, three years old, a ram, three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought them all, cut them in two, laying each half over against the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. The birds of prey came down on the carcasses, and Abram drove them away. And as the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. A deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. Just in case you missed it, we're getting ready for a mystical experience. This is very clear. This is not going to be something that could be recorded on TV. Even on that one. Right. <laughs> and when the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. I love that story. It is so strange. <laughs> But it's about what a covenant is and how they made covenants in the ancient times. We didn't have email. We didn't have digital. We had word of mouth. And there are two or three. One is shake your hand and we have an agreement, right? Well, that's a little shaky. <laughs> the other was to have a covenant. And what you did was you took your animal that you would sacrifice. And then you're going to have a party afterward and eat the animals, you know, but you sacrifice the animal, cut, cut between them, and then each party walks between the animals and say, if I do not keep the promise I make this day, may I be torn apart like this. That's serious. That's what a covenant is. That's how much God limited God's self. Abraham, if I don't keep my promise, then I will be just self-destructive. That's a covenant. It limits the parties who are involved in the covenant. And it's based, in this case, on the hope that we can learn to live as God created the world to be. A world of peace and joy, gratitude, thanksgiving. But a covenant may not be broken. The covenant is, is permanent. And that gives this word hesed, fundamental mean, basic meaning. And in fact, in, the, in most translations of the Old Testament, you will see the term translated as steadfast love. That's actually the word hesed. It's two English words to translate it to get that meaning. And it is steadfast, cannot be broken, but it is there.
Okay, let's go to Moses. Moses delivers the people, the children of the Hebrew children out of Egypt. They, they reach freedom, goes up on the mountain, gets some rocks that have been described with 10 words, 10 commandments. A new covenant is based again on God's action first. God delivers the Hebrew people out of Egypt, out of slavery. And God asks, if you would follow these rules, this is what I envision life to be like. This is how we live together in peace. This is how we help our neighbor. These are the rules that give you a vision, a picture of what life can be like. And of course, it's in the Torah, the law, that we find the two great commandments, to love God with all our heart and soul and mind, that's in Deuteronomy, to love your neighbors yourself, that's in Leviticus. Those are put together in the New Testament. That's what we're looking for, but it didn't work so well. People continued to fight, to oppress, to hurt, to kill. So we got to today, to today's Old Testament lesson, the new covenant, Jeremiah. So the Hebrew people are about ready to go and be imprisoned again. Jerusalem has either been destroyed or is about to be destroyed. And Jeremiah makes, says these words. And you've got them in front of you, but I'm going to reread them again. Jeremiah understood, that said, he understood that covenant love meant God would not abandon God's people. That God would somehow see them through. That means there's going to have to be a new covenant. And the, he's, so Jeremiah says, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, the house of Jacob. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their descend, us ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of Egypt, the covenant they broke, for I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall know me, all of them, from the least to the greatest. Thus says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. These are the terms that are used in every one of the covenants in Scripture. God will be our God. We will be God's people. That's what it means to live together in unity. Now, Jeremiah seemed to understand that setting up a set of rules, or a very vague set of rules with Abraham, pretty clear set of rules with Moses, didn't work. That somehow what needs to happen is a transformation of the heart, a change in motivation for people to move forward, to, for, for people to, to enter into the vision of the kingdom. And then, if our hearts are changed, and we know that God truly is our God, we also know we are truly gods. That gets us to today's gospel. We in the Christian church believe that in Christ Jesus, God has sealed this new covenant relationship. A covenant based on grace, not law. A covenant aims to change our hearts so that we love God and love our neighbors naturally. As Jesus says, this is his moment of glory when lifted high up on the cross. To us, to us, that doesn't seem like much glory. I mean, after all, we think of glory as terms of winning the NCAA tournament, right? Amen. Something, something that's going to get some headlines. Being crucified doesn't feel like glory. But when we see the depth, see Jesus suffering, we see the very depth of God's love. We believe that in Jesus, we see what God is like. We understand through the crucifixion that God is love, a love that will sacrifice for another. That's what the glory of God is. The glory of God is anytime there is love, it sacrifices itself for another human being, another person. That's glory. It may not feel very glory. It may not feel fun. That's the glory of God. 
self-sacrificing love. There is no greater love than being willing to give one's life for one's friends. That's how much God loves us. It's an incredible message. That's how much God loves us. Enough to experience death for us. God, the great God in the universe who created all things, experiences our pain. Knows our pain. Because God is love. That's what love does. And when we see this, we will be changed. If we really see how much God loves us through Christ Jesus on the cross, we will be changed. We will want to love in return. We will seek to do God's will in all things. In the crucifixion, we see the very breadth. We see the breadth of God's love. Jesus says, when I'm lifted up on the cross, I will draw all persons to myself. All persons. Not a few, not some nice middle class people. Not just, not just those who believe, but all people. Jesus is there for all of us. Male, female, rich, poor. Believers, non-believers, gay, straight, tall or short, black, brown, and white, young and old, clever and not so clever. Jesus is there for all of us. In the, de in the crucifixion, then, we see the depth of God's love, that God would experience death for us. And we see the breadth of God's love, that it is there for all of us. And in the resurrection, we know that nothing can separate us from this love. Not pain, not suffering, not violence, not despair. Nothing can separate us from the love which we know through Christ Jesus. The love of God which we know through Christ Jesus. So that leaves us with a question. Who are we? We are the children of God. Children of a loving God. Who is agape and chesed. A God who will not let us go. We are loved. All of us are loved. We are lovable. If God loves us this much, we dare not not love ourselves. How dare we hate ourselves? True life comes through loving and being loved. That's what the new covenant is about. We are loved. That empowers us to love others. For that, we are truly grateful. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten, not made, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. He was crucified in the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He descended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead 
alive for the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the way of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, your comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, your we commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. We pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Oh, Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh God of love, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walking love as Christ loved us, gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Oh, 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven for, who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. When we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death and resurrection and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. Be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come, as it is in heaven, this day. Forgive us our trespasses, we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. I will bring the bread to each of you. Uh, I will have sanitized my hands. I think we will be safe. Uh, we will not distribute the wine. And for those who are at home, if you will look, there is a prayer for spiritual communion available to you.
Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The bread of heaven, body of Christ, the bread of heaven, body of Christ, the bread of heaven, body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, body of Christ, the bread of heaven, body of Christ. The Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, heaven. Body of Christ, heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. I miss anybody? Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you. Sealess of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God bless us with discomfort for easy answers, half truths, superficial relationships, that we may live deep within our hearts. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. 
And may God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world so that we can do what others claim cannot be done. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you. Remain with you always. Amen. Amen.